GPU shortages are well documented at this point, but as the community grapples with high prices, the industry keeps cards bizarrely shuffling thanks to a shadowy unknown force. It's capitalism. The unknown force is capitalism. Most of the supply side GPU world can be boiled down to two key words, allocation and attachment. Allocation is the social capital behind many of the otherwise innocuous transactions between board partners and NVIDIA and AMD, the suppliers. But this even works internally, where sales departments vie over video cards. Meanwhile, further down the food chain, SIs and OEMs contend with attachment. If they want a box of GPUs from the partner, they'll have to buy a pallet of stagnant keyboards and power supplies from the same partner. You see this with Newegg's combos as a customer already. Today, we're talking about the not-so-secret GPU trade within the hardware industry. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex, multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now and we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. The stuff we're going to go over today isn't revolutionary, it's basically just economics, and it's how most industries work. But although it's not revolutionary, it's something that you might not have thought about. And if you're in retail or you're in distribution, you probably have. But for a lot of the people who are just buying components and trying to move on with their life, well, this might be interesting to know, and it might tell you a little bit more about how things work, which can be useful to an extent. For example, when you're buying something like a video card and it's forced into a combo, now you'll know why. So supply shortages are very well documented. We know why there are shortages of supply. We know why there are silicon limitations, but there's some additional behind the scenes stuff that goes on where you might see things like Newegg's shuffle or like the weird gigabyte uh, one egg reviewed power supply comboed with things like 3070s, forcing a purchase of something that you probably don't want. That's not by mistake. They know you are really, really desperate for that video card, and they know they're really desperate to get rid of this old inventory. So those things end up matched together until customers are found who are willing to put up with one thing they don't want in order to get one thing they do want. But that's not the only topic here. The rest of it is talking about things like how the SIs and the OEMs are forced to end up buying components they don't want. This is why you'll see free upgrades in system builds from system builders. Or it's why you'll see forced upgrades by system builders. Despite appearances from the outside that the market is devoid of GPUs, the reality is that they're still moving in high volume, higher volume than before. Speaking with multiple board partners and system integrators, we learned today that everybody is making more than ever. One partner told us the following, quote, everybody is making more than they've ever made, but everyone knows demand is still higher than supply. There are choke points. Video cards are packages. Productions could get bottlenecks on smaller parts, like substrates, or even parts that make interposers. There's no ingredient you can skip. This isn't a hamburger, where you're like, oh, we're out of ketchup, so we'll make it without it. I still think the biggest factor is demand. It's not like we have less supply than before or that we all under forecasted. We made twice as much inventory and it's still not enough. It's not even close to enough. AMD's Dr. Lisa Su yesterday announced that we made twice as much as last year and we still can't keep up. It's not like demand is at 2x and we're at 1.9. We're way off. Just look at eBay for that. AMD isn't alone in this either. Nvidia recently had its own Axis Devoid image uh, that sort of showed the picture, but uh, Nvidia, you can't blame Nvidia for not knowing how to make a graph, of course. The image showed Ampere units shipping versus Turing and Pascal. This could be a zoomed in scale, of course. We don't know the true numbers, but we do know that Pascal shipped at least 1 million units around its launch. We're just not sure how many weeks Nvidia's definition of the word launch spans. Nvidia also showed a two times jump in percentage of Steam gamers using Ampere versus Turing, an indicator that as we and many other reviewers recommended. Most buyers skipped to the Turing generation and held on to Pascal and Maxwell. And this supply and demand imbalance is what has caused the interesting dance that's going on behind the scenes to try and get video cards onto shelves. And by interesting, we mean desperate. By dance, we mean absolute chaos. But uh, here's some of the behind the scenes. We'll start with department negotiations. One thing we learned this past week was that departments within companies will barter over video cards. For instance, there are a couple major retailers that offer store-made pre-builds. 
and they also offer individual components. In the case of the two we spoke with, we learned that the pre-built and the component sales departments were making arrangements or agreements over who got the inventory and how much of it. If it all went to component sales, there'd be no pre-built, and those increase attach rate and move other units in the store, plus a service upcharge. But if it all went to pre-built, the store loses an anchor to encourage miscellaneous sales throughout the store as you move customers around through different aisles. Now, relating to departmental negotiations, we've also learned over the years that some of the larger AIB partners especially have category managers. So these are people who, you might have someone who manages the VGA category, someone who manages motherboards, someone who manages power supplies or peripherals, and someone who manages monitors or maybe laptops or something like that. And the category managers in sales are, to some extent, given bonuses based on the performance of their category, at least for the companies that we've spoken with in the past in this industry. So when that's the case, one thing that you'll see happen that we've uh, discussed in the past is slower moving inventory getting exchanged between category managers to try and boost the numbers for each group. So uh, it's a BART where if the VGA manager who's having a great year, certainly, uh, other than getting harassed and bombarded about where video cards are. But the VGA manager might exchange a certain amount of video card inventory for something like 5,000 keyboards or something like that. So it's a slower moving part, but you get a lot of them and you might be able to make it up over time. It all depends on what each sales category manager wants on their end of year reports. Uh, or their docket. None of this is inherently bad or wrong. It's just kind of interesting how within a company, especially large ones, you'll see uh, sort of mini competition between many companies and departments. And at companies I've been at in the past, I've seen that too firsthand. It's just this is a, a more customer facing side of things. The next concept we'll go over is attachment. There are different ways to phrase this. Some companies just call it a bundle or a combo, but we're going with attachment for an overall definition. In speaking with the AIB partners and the SIs and the OEMs, this phrase has come up a lot over the past couple of weeks. It's not just because of the psychological state caused by partnering with NVIDIA and AMD that companies are constantly speaking of attachment, but also because of the nature of trading with consumers. Board manufacturers will often strongly encourage the purchase of other products alongside highly desirable ones, like video cards. This isn't new to the industry, but it's been happening a lot lately with the video card sell-through rate, and it's more exaggerated. System integrators grind to a complete halt when they're out of video cards. So it's a showstopper for revenue when an internal inventory runs dry of anything at a system integrator or an OEM. Anyone who's building a computer, if they can't complete the computer, they're short on what they can sell. Board partners are also limited on supply, but that doesn't stop them from exploiting some of the desperation to pass the buck on to the next seller. And because everyone wants to keep selling their product, they're willing to deal with some small exploits between partners because that's just how business is done. Historically, that's meant not technically forced acquisition of things like power supplies or keyboards. The system integrators and OEMs might have gotten a pallet of unwanted power supplies, for example, and then had to get rid of them. But that just moves the stagnant product from one warehouse to another. It doesn't make the problem disappear, and someone is still paying for it. And someone is still paying for it and needs to creatively offload it to a community that has decided the product is undesirable. SIs will sometimes use free upgrades just to get things out of the warehouse. How free that is obviously depends on what else is being sold in that system. After all, you only have one power supply per system in most instances. So it's still saving a unit somewhere down the line, even if it is a truly free upgrade. The worst version of this, though, is when retailers like Newegg try to push it onto consumers directly, rather than secretly <laughs> through system integrators. We saw this with Vega and the Radeon packs a few years ago in the last mining boom, and we're seeing it again with the RTX cards. Newegg is now making video cards available in inseparable bundles with power supplies. So you can get a card, but you'll be forced to get a power supply or some other item with it. And they're not good ones. It's also possible that the AIB partner selling to Newegg is forcing these bundles to some extent via the attachment of one product to another. For example, Newegg has been bundling RTX 3070s and sometimes 3080s with the Gigabyte P750GM and P850GM power supplies that got an explosive review from Eris previously. We've actually been studying these for our own purposes. These power supplies have almost universally received one egg reviews on Newegg, and so we've been looking into that. It's clear that they're bundled with video cards so they can be gotten rid of, not to benefit the user with some kind of great deal. 
the sad thing is that they end up living in someone's storage or getting thrown out in instances where the user has no intention of using the one egg reviewed power supply that has gotten an explosive review. It just creates enormous waste for no gain. And that includes monetary waste. It's not much different than selling video cards with extra markup, except this means you're getting shipped something you don't want instead of just exchanging more money than you should for the thing you do want. Newegg Shuffle has been doing this as well lately. Back to SIs and OEMs, all these business decisions influence the parts that ultimately end up in the pre-built system, especially those that are ready to ship and uncustomized. If you wonder about why parts are mismatched value and why a company would use one versus another when it neither makes sense, it can probably be tracked back to this bartering and dumping of components. That's not always the case, but it depends on the size of the builder. It costs a lot to continue warehousing an item, and given some cost, it sometimes makes sense to reclaim any amount of money, or even just the space, rather than letting the item rot further. Allocation is the last vocabulary word here, and the last uh, behind the scenes item that we're talking about today. This is a worthwhile one to know, because whenever a new GPU launch happens, we'll hear on the press side video card partners talking about allocation. And what they're referring to in that specific instance is how many GPUs they got from often NVIDIA, which is the most vindictive with it, but AMD also does allocation. Um, it's just, it, allocation is just the amount of a limited supply that is being allocated to the partner. It's not hard to understand, but the part that's important is that it is a key bartering chip and it can be used as, depending on who you ask, we've heard the carrot and stick analogy. We've also heard the uh, basically getting beaten over the head with rules with allocation being the threatened item. Right now, we're told by AIB partners that every GPU is allocated all the way down the stack, except for maybe the GT1030. From the 1650 and up, though, it's all getting purchased by partners every time there's inventory available. This puts everyone in a tenuous position, particularly relative to NVIDIA, which is notoriously vindictive with its partners with allocation and will reduce the quantity a partner can purchase if rules aren't strictly followed, like what's stated by representatives or shown at trade shows, for example. Typically, the 80 or the 80 Ti SKUs are the ones that are always allocated through at least half of the life cycle. The 2080 Ti, from what we understand, was an exception to this rule, where because of its price, it wasn't actually selling through as much as previous ADTI SKUs towards the back half of its life. But it's not only the 80 and the ADTIs that are high value to partners and the ones that are 100% allocated, it's just a matter of who gets how much. The reason they're high value is because they're basically a guaranteed sale, where something in the past, like a 1050 Ti, isn't a guaranteed sale, and the GT1030 clearly isn't one either, but at this point, they are actually selling, sort of, or better than normally anyway, better than they deserve to be selling. So. The 1650 and up are allocated now. This is typically the case where in a 1050 or a 1060 class SKU, it's not guaranteed instant sales as soon as it goes on the shelf. Uh, and so historically, there would be more openings to place an order and get what you actually want versus what's available for this class of card. But that's not the case today. Asus actually many months ago told us, and we can name them publicly for this one because it's not a big deal, but many months ago told us that the 1650s were their most popular seller and the 1660s after that, which isn't normal for, for Asus at least. Normally, Asus sees better sales in one or two steps higher than those, but just because of the availability, those have been the easiest to get items for Asus and also the easiest to purchase items for customers, at least a couple months ago when we heard this information. So the big difference here, at least for 2021, is that everything is constantly allocated. NVIDIA can't keep up. It doesn't matter how many NVIDIA orders because the fab isn't theirs and the silicon isn't theirs. They're buying all of that from someone else. And so if that partner can't keep up either, like Samsung or TSMC, then NVIDIA obviously can't do a whole lot. And neither can the partners, and neither can the SIs or the retailers. And so it, in this instance, there's always a bottleneck. But right now, it's not as simple as why can't they just make more? Because, well, the partners certainly can't. They don't make the GPUs. And if NVIDIA and AMD can't because they don't make the silicon, then they're all screwed, but only so screwed because they're making record profits and record sales. It is interesting though, because we spoke with some board partners about this uh, a while ago. And one of them that, that I spoke to personally, I asked, do you think that the limited um, ability for customers to get a video card on demand, like I want it, you go to a retail, you buy it, you get it that day or the next day. 
Do you think that uh, the lack of that ability this time affects the long-term health of the market? And the answer was yes. This particular representative thought it would hurt because it reduces the excitement, the enthusiasm about the whole industry because people are disillusioned about their ability to even get something. Speaking with another person in the industry, not a board partner, but just a representative at one of the companies, and we were kind of talking through the different scenarios in which a user might be discouraged from following the industry despite not actively wanting to build something or buy a video card. And the topic that came up was he said he personally enjoys to spec out a system just for fun, even if he's not necessarily going to build it, but it's the idea that he might build it that makes it fun. And when there's no supply of the parts that would go in that, that maybe will, maybe won't exist system, it takes the, all of the fun out of the process of even thinking through it as just sort of a, a mental or a brain challenge for the day. So anyway, just some, some stuff to think about. But end of the day, the big thing to look at here, the main thing we wanted to talk about was just how GPUs are exchanged, how it's such a, a high value commodity right now that you have departments fighting over it internally. And the thing that you could take away as a, a viewer or builder of systems is that when you see things, bundled together, like on Newegg, uh, or wh whoever else does it, be at least a little bit skeptical. If you're willing to write off the bundled-in power supply, for example, as just an extra expense, just imagine it as part of the GPU's price, and that you're not actually getting something for it, then it's not such a big deal, because you've already made the sort of the mental separation that if I'm spending, let's say, an extra $200 on this video card, rather than saying I'm spending an extra $200 on the video card and I'm getting a power supply, if you're going with the first route, then it's not going to hurt you. But if you think you're getting a good power supply or a good monitor or a good peripheral whatever bundled in, that might not be the case. Sometimes it is, but you look at some of Newegg's deals lately and uh, they're horrible. It's just exploitation of consumers because they're desperate to get a video card and it would look bad if Newegg just sold it for an extra $200 rather than trying to make it look like it's actually worth it by throwing in something like, oh, here's a power supply that we can't get rid of, has one-star reviews, and was, at least in one instance, uh, something that exploded. But you look at the reviews, and it's, it seems like the burning out SSDs and killing components is common for that particular power supply. So uh, anyway, point is, when you see combos and bundles, it might not be there to benefit you. It might be because they have to get rid of something. So just keep that in mind. But that's how it works behind the scenes. Uh, not revolutionary, kind of basic retail and distribution. Some of you probably know this already. Most of you probably do if you've worked in, the, in distribution, retail, whatever. Uh, but there it is. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. And we'll see you all next time. <laughs>